two years prior to Ball Memorial Hospital's founding in 1929, a young nursing teacher named Nellie G. Brown arrived from Boston to instruct a new generation of caregivers. This is her story. I did first start up at the Harper Hospital of Nursing, and then earned my teaching degree from Columbia University's Teachers College. After that, I went to the nursing practice in New York, and then Boston. It was near 1927 when I arrived in Muncie. Having come from a big city like Boston, Muncie was an awful small little town to find myself in. The only medical facility was a ragamuffin little old place called the Home Hospital. It was a smallish kind of place, and on any given day I would have had about 58 patients or so, most of whom stayed for around 10 days. At most we could fit only 62, and so we were constantly short of space. Two years after my arrival though, we moved into a new facility just across town. I remember the day we moved quite well. A parade of ambulances, fire trucks, and private cars transported patients, files, and equipment. It was a hectic day, fraught with confusion. There were wild uncertainty for a time when it was feared that the safe was missing. However, a double check revealed that it had simply been left behind to be moved later. On the first day in the new building, three babies were born, and the hospital was thrown into utter disorder. And heavens! One birth a day had been the absolute most we've seen at the home hospital. There was so much enthusiasm among the doctors and staff that there was a mad rush to see who could be the first to deliver babies, operate on patients, and do anything else that had to be done. When Ball Memorial Hospital's original main building opened its doors for inspection on August 4, 1929, many citizens felt its 160 beds were far in excess of the foreseeable needs of the community and surrounding area, but they were soon proven wrong by the growing demand. By 1937, the hospital's capacity was expanded to 224 beds and following an intensive fundraising campaign, was expanded again in 1957 to house 450 beds. Hospital demands continued to climb, however, and the complex was again expanded in 1963 with the aid of another fundraising campaign to cover the construction of a five-story, 196-bed east wing. Expansion continued at a steady rate with the completion of the 320-bed, 10-story tower in 1979, which then brought the hospital to a capacity of over 600. It was back in 1949, though, before the hospital became what it is today, that the polio epidemic hit Muncie, and Nellie Brown was there to lead the charge. On one July Sunday morning, everything was quite calm, leastways, as calm as hospital could be. That evening, I received two phone calls within 30 minutes, each telling me that a patient had gone into a respirator, and the third was imminent. Trouble was, we had only two machines. The next morning, I called Jack Raggart, a local manufacturer and inventor, to come to have a look at our plans for our iron lungs. He came and inspected the ones we had running, as well as all the plans, and then went straight back to his factory. At this time, he called seven metal workers, showed them the plans, and told them the hospital will likely need another iron lung by nightfall. Raggart called a number of local stores and shops, all who enthusiastically donated all the materials he asked for. Within 10 hours, a new lung was built and trucked at the hospital. After that, he built three more, each one better than the last, including a portable one that we could haul around town. Furthermore, the engineers of Borg Warner looked over the schematics, fixed them up a bit, and then were able to put out six more iron lungs. In Muncie, the medical battle against polio was fought by local industries while I directed the nurses and hospital staff. But even then, it was a great team effort. I didn't do so very much. It was the town that fought. After 25 years on staff at Bowl Memorial, Nellie G. Brown retired in 1952. She spent the rest of her years on a farm with her sister, growing fruits and vegetables. Her involvement and leadership with the hospital has left a lasting, positive impression on both the Ball State Nursing Program and Ball Memorial Hospital. Just like you don't want to scream. Of course, the cart was hard and it almost killed me up. But just to leave it go, boy, it was my cup. I've got those cold cart blues.